Tanya Benjamin, ESOL, Carolina High End Academy. Expecting the impossible. Sometimes they just believe that there's no way I'm going to pass this HSAP. There's no way I can do it. And I'm there to reach out my hand every day to say, I'm here to help you. And it's getting them to see that you are way more than you ever thought you could be. It, it, it's just putting a little more effort and convincing them that just a little bit more, a little bit more, and that impossible actually does become possible. It's there. It's right there in front of you. It's just waiting for you. Lee Berman, English, Greenville Senior High Academy. I think my favorite part about having high expectations is that my students are impressed with themselves and that's like the plus on any paper for me. I like to bring in guest speakers for my students to show them the importance of uh, strong written and verbal communication skills and they see that best when somebody other than me is doing the talking. I have brought in experts on Africa when we've been studying a book on Africa. I have brought in engineers, we have city planners. But when they see the importance of truly outstanding written and verbal communication skills from somebody other than their English teacher, that really hits home and then they're with me for the whole ride. Sandy Brooks, English, Wade Hampton High School. Today's technology allows teachers to take learning beyond the classroom with interactive boards and mobile computer labs, we are able to do so much more than just lecture. And I try to use technology in my classroom as much as possible. I've taken students on virtual tours of the Globe Theater when we've studied Shakespeare. And I have shown them the original text of Beowulf when we've studied the Anglo-Saxon period. I have been able to use a combination of the Promethean Board and the mobile lab to teach research and the students can use the laptops at their desk and navigate sites while I use the Promethean Board and demonstrate for them. Brooke Poe, first grade, Paris Elementary. I believe for children to learn something well, they truly have to hear it, see it, have it explained to them in different ways and discuss it among others and I believe technology gives us that opportunity to allow children to have these different experiences. NASA um, taught the students about the sun and moon which was really you know more interesting and captivating to the students than me standing at the front of the room teaching. I believe that allowed them to be active participants in you know asking questions with them and discussing it with them and seeing the sun from their telescopes and just having that real world experience helps them to want to learn more, which helps them to be active participants as well. Tanya Poole, fifth grade, Summit Drive Elementary School. I try to empower each one of my students to really take ownership in their own education and to realize that they are a stakeholder. One of the first things we do at the beginning of the year is utilize one of the quality tools strategies of creating a class mission statement and giving us a sense of a common purpose for being in school. The next thing I do is I give each student their own personal data from previous years and by analyzing it with my help they're able to see trends in their own personal career as well as um, we have discussions of, of trends that I see as a class and I often in class relate it to sports. You know, when you're not doing well with your pitches or your strokes in swimming, what do you do? They say practice more. I want them to see the connection between their effort and the outcome. Amanda Powell, fifth grade, Duncan Chapel Elementary. I believe it's very important for children to interact on a daily basis um, for several reasons. One is the kids need it for their social development. It's very important that they have positive interaction. Also, I need it. I love watching my kids interact, especially when they don't know that I'm watching. I learned so much about them, whether it's during inside recess when they're playing a game and I listen to them, or whether it's during a group activity. Fifth grade is a very pivotal year. They are learning about themselves, they are be, they're changing, they're coming across challenges that are new to them. 
I need to be able to sit back and observe and listen to them and help them get through these times and find out who they are so they can be independent learners and lifelong learners. Heath Provost, Science, League Academy. I absolutely love teaching chemistry. One of my favorite projects is where they do a chemical reaction in a baggie. And they mix two powders and put a liquid in there and they get an immediate exothermic reaction and then the baggie blows up and that gets them a little bit nervous but then at the same time they're excited because they know they did something and, and kind of cool. And, and the color change all involved in that and they, they really, really enjoy that activity. And I like to have my room have energy in a, and be sciencey with cool science things because I just think science rocks. Angela Rex, sixth through eighth grade strings, Bryson Middle School. We'll do things, for instance, if we're working on a piece, maybe in seventh or eighth grade, or even in the sixth grade, that's very challenging to get in tune. And I have a Beanie Baby skunk that I use, and he's stinky, his name is Stinky, and he smells notes that are out of tune. I'll take the skunk and just walk over and just gently lay it on their stand. Not call them out, not make them feel embarrassed that they're out of tune. And then they kind of realize, oh yeah, I haven't quite focused in on that pitch yet. And it's fun because I don't have to say you're out of tune or you're out of tune and call students out. Just using those simple gimmicks can work. After a few weeks of learning things together, they really work as a team. And we're working on learning Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and they learn that first little part or we put the bow on the string for the first time and they all turn to each other and go, wow, we learned how to do it. And so instantly they've become a family. Linda Reynolds, seventh and eighth grade English language arts, Sterling School. I chose teaching as my career because growing up, I moved around all of my life. And each time I went into a new school, teachers were a guiding source for me and they helped me make the transition into new schools. So when I was going into college and I didn't know what major to choose, um, teaching seemed like a good one. I wanted to make a difference in young people's lives and I wanted to help them. And I thought that if I could make a difference and help people, that uh, that could be rewarding for me. And the rewards to me in teaching are when students come back later on and they say, I get it. They see the relevance or the rewards of what we've done in the classroom. They see it down the road and they can make connections to what we've done and they can see the importance of what they've learned. They see how it relates to them and they can make a personal connection to things that we've done in the classroom. Robin Upshaw, Special Education Career Preparation, Woodmont High School. I think the main thing that I do to prepare my students for the real world is they're not going to be the doctors and lawyers of tomorrow, the, the particular group of students that I teach. They're going to be our blue collar workers. And I think being positive is extremely important to any teacher, but I think especially to a special education teacher because these kids need encouragement. They need to be lifted up, they need to be supported, they need to be loved. And they feel that when when, when I love them and we are able to have a good time and enjoy learning, they want to learn more. And if anything can be made fun, then of course you want more of that. <laughs>